Hi, this is Tony Farmer of Tony Farmer's Garden, and this is your step-by-step -step instructional guide on how to build raised beds specifically for a school garden. So we're gonna go over the materials that you need, but first I wanna talk about how you're gonna set up your day. There's a couple different ways you can divide the day. If you would like to have it be an adult and volunteer build only after school hours, you can do that. Or you can have your students and the families and parents be involved, which I always recommend. It's not always possible, but whenever you can have the students involved in building the school garden, it's a plus. So if you're gonna have volunteers on the weekend, what I recommend that you do is reach out to either parents of the students in your class, or you can also reach out to groups that do projects like this, like Rotary Clubs, Boy Scout and Girl Scout Clubs, or even if you have a master gardener group in your area. The second thing that I recommend is you gather your tools ahead of time and make sure you are finding locations that will donate your lumber and your materials so that your school system isn't having to pay for them. So let's take a look at the materials that you need. A tape measure, a pencil, you'll need a cordless power drill, you'll need a Phillips head tip, and it's not necessary, but a drill bit to pre-drill your holes can sometimes be a good idea. You'll need a box of three inch exterior or wood screws. For each raised bed that you build, you'll need three pieces of pressure treated lumber or cedar in two by two by eight foot lengths. There has been some controversy over using pressure treated lumber when you're gonna grow food, but I find that these are generally safe now, that most of the materials, arsenic and other contaminants that used to be used for pressure treated lumber have been illegal for quite some time. And I have also soil tested in garden beds many times where pressure treated lumber has been used and I have not found the contaminants transmitted into the soil. However, if your group does not want to use pressure treated lumber, make sure you use something like cedar that will break down very slowly in an environment like an outdoor garden setting. Building raised beds for your garden can be a one person job as I'll show you in this video, or you can involve as many children and parents as you want. It's not very difficult to build a raised bed. The first thing that you're gonna to need to do is cut one of these pieces of lumber in half. You have three pieces, remember, that are eight foot in length. By cutting one in half, you'll have all the pieces you need to make the four foot ends and the eight foot lengths. Getting this cut can be done in one of two ways. Wherever you buy your lumber from, frequently they will have a service where they will make simple cuts for you, and you can ask for one of every three pieces to be cut exactly in half. Or you can do it yourself with a chop saw. Perhaps you have a volunteer or a parent or someone that has one that can bring it to the job site the day of your build. If you'd like to have children and parents involved during the build, and you're probably gonna do it after school maybe, or you could do it on the weekend, just make sure that you have one parent for every child that is coming for liability reasons. I don't know what age you are working with. Most of the school gardens that I work with are grades six and under, and each one of those grades has different skill sets, fine motor skills, and safety habits. So you and the parent need to be the best judge of what child is comfortable using a power drill or a saw or doing nailing of any kind. Once you have that established, check with your school district to see if there's any liability issues or waivers that you need to sign, and then you're ready to schedule it and get started. If you're cutting these in half on the site, you'll need a measuring tape and a pencil. Most eight foot pieces of lumber are just a little bit longer than eight feet. So I don't cut them to be exactly four feet long. I simply run my measuring tape the entire length of the piece of wood. This one happens to be eight feet and one inch. So I'll come back and do this exactly in half. So four feet and one half of an inch. Mark it, and then you're ready to use your chop saw to cut it in half. I'm gonna get my safety glasses. Now it's time to assemble our raised beds. I highly recommend that you do this on a level surface, maybe the school parking lot or if there's a patio, I'm gonna use my back patio right here, just so you know that it isn't wonky when you finish putting it together before you move it to where it's going to actually stay. So I've got my two pieces here, we cut one in half and I'm gonna assemble this on the level patio surface with the ends and the sides. 
and you'll need to make a decision about how you want the end to look. Some people don't care. Others care about which angle people are seeing the garden from. And so if people are coming in the garden this way all the time and you want them to have a nice finished look, you may want to put your end pieces on the outside and screw in this way. Or if the people are coming in the garden this way and you want to finish it on this edge on this side, you'll take this and put it on the inside and drill your screws in this way. So now you're ready to assemble your raised beds. And as I said before, you can pre-drill your holes. It's not necessary. The reason that we pre-drill holes is to keep the wood from splitting. But pressure-treated lumber doesn't have a reputation for splitting easily. So you can do this step just to make things easier or you can skip it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it. So I'll make two holes in the end of my piece of lumber, making sure that when I assemble this, they will be centered on this piece here. I'll turn this piece on its side so that my holes line up with the end of this piece. And now I will switch my bit out. and put my Phillips head tip in. This is pretty easy to do, and I have a separate video on how to operate a drill if you found this confusing. So I'm gonna take now my three inch screws, put them into the holes that I just pre-drilled, and screw those in. If you've got students working with you at this point, this is a great way to teach them an extra skill of how to operate a drill and how to put screws into wood. But you're gonna to wanna to use your best judgment on the age of the students and who is allowed to hold the drill and operate it by themselves and who is not. And I highly recommend you have a parent, which each child, who is guiding them in this process. Now that you're done assembling all four corners, your raised bed is essentially done. If you'd like to make this higher than eight inches, you can build a second one of these, rest it on top, and then screw some cross pieces in to hold the two together. But I believe an eight inch raised bed is probably good for most school gardens for what you need to do. Then you're going to need to deal with whatever is underneath your raised bed. It's probably grass. All you need to do is put a layer of cardboard or newspaper that your students bring in and lay it on the bottom before you put soil in here. That will kill the grass and prevent weeds from going up through. Once you're done building your raised beds, you're going to want to situate them in your school garden. And I recommend you find a place that has ideally eight hours of sun or more a day and is also protected in some way from trespassers and animals. But I've seen school gardens situated anywhere you can possibly imagine, so there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is an example of some raised beds I built in my own garden, and I just wanted to show you that I made these double high simply because that was the way I wanted to design my garden, so you can make them higher than the ones that I just showed you how to build. And also that I painted these. They'll last a little bit longer in the weather if you paint them, and you can have some fun and paint them the school colors for your elementary school, or paint them all uniform color just to match the school building. It's entirely up to you. And then you'll also want to decide what are you going to have in your pathways between your raised beds. The first year that you do this, I recommend that you not do anything. Just let there be the grass or whatever material was there before. But as the school garden program grows, you may want to consider gravel or mulch or something else in between the raised beds so that when students and teachers are outside, you have a, a easy access pathways between your raised beds. And then you're ready to fill your raised beds up with soil and get started planting. I hope you feel inspired after watching this video and feel like you can build raised beds for your school garden. Please let me know if you have questions. For more content on school gardens or backyard gardens, you can visit TonyFarmersGarden.com and you can join Tony Farmers Garden Club on Facebook where I answer all your gardening questions. 
I hope you have a thriving garden this summer and I hope you have the success building a school garden program for your school. I'm Tony Farmer and this is my garden.